Hi, I'm Carl Lewis, and this is the Bet Central Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Bet Central Podcast. My name is Mitch Maikiana. It's a massive week. It is, of course, Champions League semi final. Real Madrid taking on Manchester City. And, of course, we have a lovely one on Wednesday saying goodbye to the San Siro with the classic Milan derby. Joining us today, we've, of course, got David Gabble and Grant, who's always here. We're going to be jumping into all the action and, of course, giving our bets and takes of how things will go this first leg semi-final. Gentlemen, before we get started, how is everyone doing? It's bright and early on a Monday morning, and also Champions League is on our mind. Yeah, look, I'm well, because Chelsea got a win this weekend, which was uh, extremely rare and extremely surprising, so... Yeah, that did spruce up my weekend and my mood a bit. As, um, and I know Dave's got a massive game this week for the team he supports. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well on my side. I'm a bit on the edge, I must be honest. Uh, it's, a, it's a big game for Leverkusen. They lost on Friday. So, yeah, can't wait for, for Thursday, to be honest. Okay, gentlemen, let's waste no time. Let's get into it. First one is, of course, taking place at the Bernabeu. Manchester City taking on Real Madrid. Last time out, Real Madrid coming in clutch. I think it was just Thibaut Courtois studs keeping Jack Grealish out of the net to secure uh, well, a final spot for Los Blancos. This one, though... Uh, City have Erling Haaland up front, who's firing on all cylinders. If Haaland doesn't score, we can see that Elkai Gundogan can chip in with some goals. Kevin De Bruyne, Jack Grealish looks up for it. Plus, Mares is always a threat. Grant, I'm going to come to you. Uh, how are you looking at this game? How do you think it's going to go? I mean, a lot of people have picked City as favourites. Yeah, I think City are the favourites. I mean, the bookies certainly agree with. When I had a look at the odds, I was quite surprised by you know how much they are favoured. 1.32 to qualify for City is, is kind of crazy. Um, and it's not really surprising. City have been looking so great in recent months. They're on a long winning streak now. In the Premier League, they've also managed um, to give a few guys a breather, which which has also been, I think, very important this weekend. We saw guys that you know who've played almost every match of late, like Ruben Diaz, Rodri and Jack Grealish, all getting pretty much full rests. And also guys like Kyle Walker, who's going to be so key against Vinicius, you know, um, in that sort of right centre back spot, you know, he only played 35 minutes over the weekend. So I think for Guardiola's side, they in really good shape. Of course, De Bruyne is back from injury. That's massive because, you know, he for, for all their the top players, when you know when he's on his game, he's really the number one match winner. I think even ahead of Haaland because he creates so many goals for Haaland, and we've seen Haaland have quite pretty quiet games, and at least so in terms of his involvement in matches. But with De Bruyne there, you know, he can score massive goals in the big game and set up Haaland for, for so many of his strikes. So I think him being fit is a massive factor. And of course, Real Madrid have just won a trophy over the weekend. Um, you know, they beat Osasuna in the Copa del Rey final, which is a, obviously a great way to come into this game, but maybe not necessarily what they would have wanted in the scheduling. You know, they're quite an old squad. Even someone like Fede Valverde said after that game that he's he's basically he's knackered because um, they're, playing, they're playing so many matches with all the competitions they've been in. Uh, there's going to be some fatigue, and in that game, they couldn't really rest a lot of players. You know, Modric got a breather. He only played, uh, he only came on in the 82nd minute, but Karim Benzema played. And for most of the Champions League big matches, Benzema doesn't play the, the match before in the in the league. He sort of rests up at home. He's obviously in his mid 30s now, so it's not ideal preparation for them when City have rested players as well. Um, and it's, it's quite difficult to know how this will play out. You know, Real Madrid have leaked goals this season, especially of late. They've been leaking goals, but in the Champions League, they they kept two clean sheets against Chelsea. Um, probably no you know, real surprise there, but they did keep a clean sheet against Liverpool in their match before that. We've seen them do that in, in games, even though they can suffer in matches and be quite deep. They actually defend their box brilliantly. So it's it's going to be a fascinating first leg. It was really difficult to know how to even predict this one. You know, um, like an outright win is quite difficult to see. I wouldn't be shocked if City won, you know, at Real Madrid. We saw Chelsea win at Real Madrid last season. They're very similar Madrid side, and Chelsea played brilliantly in that game. And City could do that with the way they're playing, especially with how they dominate those central areas um, and can maybe make it difficult for Tony Cruz and Luka Modric. So that's possibly one way I could see this going. Otherwise, I think the goals markets might be ways, you know, ways to look at the betting. I'm really keen to hear what Dave's got in his in his tickets. 
Yeah, look, Dave, I mean, when you look at Manchester City and the goals market, it's quite tough to put even any 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 time goal score on Erling Haaland because the odds are so low because he's pretty much guaranteed to, to nail one. Uh, what's your thoughts looking at Manchester City as a squad? You know, how... Uh, I think they took a little bit of the foot off the gas against um, in the game over the weekend, but you know what a what a threat and what a strong side they are, and they're also going to be reeling. I think the big trophy that they need is, of course, the Champions League. Yeah, I mean that is the the like you say that's the one trophy that Pep obviously wants to win at City that that the bosses want him to win there that you know uh, has sort of eluded him in recent years. Um, sometimes a bit unlucky, sometimes overthinking. Um, I think, and I think I said it from the beginning of the season that it feels like Haaland was the missing uh, puzzle to his jigsaw. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he's sort of proven that with 50 goals already, uh, the season breaking records left, right and centre. And and uh, like Grant said, you know, being set up by De Bruyne, who's also in, in superb form. I mean, City had 20 games unbeaten, 17 wins, three draws. Uh you guys mentioned the goals market. Fifteen out of their last twenty games had over two point five goals. So it you know it promises fireworks on paper. Uh, Real also with ten wins in fourteen games. You know they uh, often come right when they need to come right. But they had some recent games where you know they they lost some surprise games. Maybe uh, it's that mental side um, when they're not really hundred percent focused. They can give a game away. Uh, but for this one, obviously, they, they will be fired up because it's Champions League. It's it's their competition. They are the record champions. Uh, also, eight out of their last 14 games had over 2.5 goals. And, um, I mean, we all know what happened last season in the head-to-head record. Last five, uh, four games, also over 2.5 goals and both teams to score. Uh, so, it promises fireworks on paper. Um, I, I'm leaning towards uh, also Man City. Uh, not for an outright win, but I don't think um, they will lose the first leg just because of the form they are in and uh, because of what's at stake for them. Um, obviously, you can never write off Real Madrid in particular, not at home, uh, but I think City will try to tighten it up uh, a little bit and, and hope to score one here in the Bernabeu. Uh, so for the multi, I went with the Man City uh, win or draw at, at 1.38 odds. All right, awesome. And for that code, obviously, 99TPP. That's 99TPP. And then I just want to get um, your single single bet when it comes to this fixture. I think for me, when I'm looking at both of them, I think it's a guarantee that both teams score. I think Los Blancos, as you mentioned, Grant, have had uh, well, five clean sheets in the Champions League, but you can see that they've been recently making some silly mistakes and also conceding as well. I mean, just a few weeks ago, they conceded four goals away from home. Um, so, yeah, I that's where I'm leaning. How about you guys? Yeah, I like, um, you know, my goal scorer's market. I mean, you mentioned Haaland. I think actually the odds are decent for him at 1.8 to score any time. You know, it's it's a lot, it's higher than you get in most uh, Premier League games. Um, I would look at him, but I also have an outside uh, bet on uh, Rodrigo to score. Because City also have leaked a few goals of late. Uh, you know, but they're just scoring so many that it, Often doesn't matter, but Rodrigo's in decent form. He scored both goals in the in the Copa final, five goals in, in six games. He's actually at five odds to score for this one. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of a value bet, maybe that if someone wants to take a risk. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, Haaland was so strongly linked with Real Madrid before he went to City. I mean, a lot of people thought that it, you know would, would be where he ends up, or he might even end up there late in his career. It's quite possible. So, yeah, he'll be desperate to score. So, I'd, I think it's a reasonable it's reasonable value at 1.8 for a player like him. We've seen it drop. You know, we, obviously, we spoke in our podcast this weekend. The, the, there's almost no value on him scoring in the Premier League, just one goal anymore because how much the yeah. odds have actually dropped there. Um, my single bet, I quite, what I quite like is the double chance market on City and then going over 2.5 goals. That's 2.45. The reason being, you know, Real Madrid have been are playing quite an attacking side at the moment. Rodriguez starting, he was often an impact sub with Valverde on the right, and then a more, you know, three genuine central midfielders, um, and then Valverde attacking in as well. So it was a bit more solid. I think now it's in a very attacking setup with Rodriguez starting, even Camavinga playing at left back. So yeah, I think they'll probably concede 
at least one City will score at least one or two. So if I'm not 100% brave enough to go on a City win, then I think that's my, the way I'd go. Double chance and over 2.5 at 2.45. All right, from there, we move on over to that massive one, San Siro. It is, of course, the Milan derby. Now, Inter Milan have won three of the last four derbies going into this one. Uh, massive result for AC Milan over the weekend. That Theo Hernandez goal. It seems like he's got that in his locker. He's done it multiple times now. Where he's got the ball from his box, dribbled all the way through, and hit it top bins. I think this is going to be an exciting game. I think we're going to be looking at both sides who have influential players within those sides. And it's going to be amazing to see an Italian team in the final. Dave, what's your thoughts on this one? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, Milan, like you said, massive win against Lazio. Um, I think they're unbeaten in nine games, but uh, a bit up and down because four wins only, but in five draws. I think Pioli uh, often rested his team uh, ahead of the, the Champions League clashes and, and gave away a few... Uh, easy results in the league, which which has cost them because they've fallen out of the Champions League spots. But obviously, the win against Lazio has brought them closer again. Uh, Inter also in decent form, one loss in, in 10. Uh, they've won six of them, in, including the last uh, five. Uh, Lautaro Martinez, you know, he's found his scoring boots, five goals in, in six games. Even Lukaku um, chipping in off the bench. Um, however, <clears throat> I think this one will be a tight game where we... Emotional, obviously, for both sides. It's a massive derby. Um, I could see quite a few cards here, actually, uh, in this game. For the multi, uh, I selected under, under 3.5 goals. I can't really see, you know, this to be a, a free-flowing open game. Uh, I think it's going to be very tight, very tense. Uh, neither team wants to give, you know, something away and... and go into the second leg, you know, with the tie already decided. Uh, under 3.5 gives 1.21 odds for this one. Uh, but yeah, interesting to see what, what Grant says from an analytical point of view. I mean, Grant, you look at you look at it and, I mean, as Dave said, it's, it's going to be a tight game. Do we avoid the goals market in something like this or could there be value in there? It's quite a difficult game to predict because, you know, these sides have had really up and down seasons in sort of at least since the World Cup break. You know, AC Milan had a really bad period with injuries. Now they've been a lot more consistent with their side back together. I mean, Inter Milan went into their Benfica tie, you know, on a run of six matches without winning. Uh, they looked, yeah, they were struggling a bit. And yes, they were resting players. As, as Dave said, so were AC Milan in a, in a lot of fixtures before the Champions League games. But I've watched Inter quite a few times lately, and they've been playing. They've been playing pretty well of late. Um, I've been. I was impressed with them in the Benfica tie, even in the second leg. You know, they were three-one up, and then that tie was over before they leaked those two late goals. And they've been. They've been rotating quite a lot in, in league matches and still getting wins. They put six past Verona last weekend. This weekend they beat um, Roma, which I wasn't surprised by. I did. I did predict that in a in a preview. I did because um, you know Roma have a lot of injuries, and they also have a big Europa League tie coming up. So that was a fine result. It's very important for the top four race. And even Lukaku is playing pretty well at the moment. He's scoring goals again. He got a couple of assists recently against Lazio. And even if he's on the bench, you know he can come on and score and gives them a really good option later in the fixture. So I think there might be goals. Um, it's, it is quite a difficult game on the goals front to predict. One of the biggest factors, I think, is going to be whether Rafael Leal is fit because you know he went off with a groin injury against Lazio. It's difficult to know how serious it is. I mean, he said on Instagram that, you know, we go again type thing. So it's hopeful that he's he hasn't got a serious injury because, of course, we saw his amazing dribble against Napoli and we speak about him on this particular Champions League podcast all the time. It's been, you know, one of our sort of favorite players that um, we're always backing in the scoring markets and so forth. So if he's playing, I think that changes the way the game plays out in terms of goals completely. And if he's missing, then AC Milan have to be more circumspect just stay in the tie and and see what happens. And of course, at the center, the the home ground away advantage is not there in the same way. You know, of course, they're in different dressing rooms for the two ties, but it's not there in the same way. So it makes it quite a difficult game to call. My feeling, having watched Inter playing a lot recently, is that they are probably going to go through in this tie. Having said that, I said Napoli would beat AC Milan and Milan still got through. So, um, you know, I watched AC Milan play in the group stages against Chelsea and they were beaten home and away. And it's kind of crazy to see them now end up in the semi-finals, possibly even in a final, 
when when Chelsea are sitting like 11th or 12th in the league. It's amazing how far things have changed in those few months. But I just think Inter are slightly more, I don't know, a more consistent side. They, I like this their tactical setup. They've got quite a few guys contributing at the moment. Even guys like unheralded guys like DiMarco has been playing really well. Plus they have options on the bench with Correa and Lukaku, which I don't really see AC Milan as having. So I fancy Inter over the tie. And I mean, in this game, I think they'll probably avoid defeats. Um, so, I mean, I could possibly see in this game like a draw or something um, to start off with. Uh, Dave, I want to push you for a single bet when we're looking at the Milan derby. Lautaro, uh, I mentioned him before, five goals in six games. Uh, he seems to be in good form. You know, Milana, Milan have not always uh, kept a clean sheet of late. Uh, there's actually quite good value on him to score 2.9. Uh, you almost triple your money. So that's that's where my free bet would go to. And how about you, Grant? Yeah, I really like the Martinez one. He's been playing well of late. He's uh, very good in the Benfica tie. And late in the game, when Lukaku comes, you know, comes on, probably, they have a different kind of chemistry. So there's a chance of him scoring late in the fixture as well. So I quite like that one. I think that's a pretty good bet to go for. Yes, Giroud's been scoring a lot in the Champions League as well. It's, you know, he's, you know, he's at 3.6. So I'd probably go for one of those two, Martinez or Giroud, because... The game's hard, you know, hard to call, and there's uncertainty over the starting eleven with with some of the other players. So, yeah, I would go and I kind of concur with Dave there. Well, that's how it's looking up for the Champions League. Before I let you go, gentlemen, before we jump into the games, any uh, last thoughts? I'm just looking forward to it. I just, it's a little bit of a pity that Real Madrid City feels like the kind of the final before the final, because I really think whoever goes through will beat the Milan sides in the final. But nevertheless, it's going to be exciting having a derby on Wednesday. Um, it's, quite, it's quite cool in the semis just to have one game, all the focus on that. No, what, you know, no worries about having to split your attention. So, yeah, it's be good football to enjoy. No, hundred percent. I agree. I agree, uh, uh, Grant. I'm I'm sorry, uh, Mitch, that you're on this podcast uh, because maybe in a few weeks <laughs> it will be heartbreak for you. Uh, you know, I know it's right, and, and we can never write them off. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I can't really see anybody beat uh, City in Europe this season. You know, like Grant said, you know, whoever goes through between Real and City, I, I favor City. And, and I think uh, uh, either side will be too strong for either of the Milan sides. So it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting week. Real have proven me wrong the season before, in particular, Carlo Ancelotti. You know, I didn't think he could have uh, the success he has uh, at Real, you know, after his uh, sort of stint at Everton. That was quite disappointing and how he left Bayern Munich. So you never know. You, you know, it's football in the end of the day. Well, thank you very much for joining me. As the Madrid star on this podcast, listen, I'm going to be brave enough to put it out there. Let's expect a 3-1 win from Real Madrid. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, confidence is key. And maybe it's a little bit of... Uh, maybe it's a little bit of delusion, but before we jump from um, from Europa, let's go, can we go into let's go into Europa? Let's check out what's happening there. I mean, there's a couple of massive fixtures. Sorry, I, I totally forgot. Um, but yeah, we got Europa League that's also happening here. It's also boiling down to some of those big fixtures. We've got one that I'm super super excited to be eyeing is of course the the, the massive one. We've got. Uh, Juventus taking on Sevilla. That's happening on Thursday. Uh, Grant, I'm going to bring it to you. Uh, both teams look look to be up to it. I mean, Juventus still second in Serie A, but it's looking interesting in terms of that top four race. It's a whole different discussion. And of course, Sevilla is a team that can turn up on this day. This trophy is pretty much their competition. Mm. Yeah, it's and so the one thing about Sevilla is they were they were having an awful season a couple of a couple of months back. I mean. When they lost to Getafe in, in sort of mid to late March, they were, I think, two points above the drop zone. And of course, they had to, you know, they had to sack their coach. And um, since then, it's just the whole season's turned around. Um, it's It's been really impressive. They, they, of course, have good players. And it's you have to say, you know, Jorge Sampaoli just wasn't getting, uh, sorry, um, Jorge Sampaoli just wasn't getting a tune out of them. He was, they were leaking loads of goals. Um, he, he, you know, he did take over without a preseason. So you give him some leeway on that front but the way they've turned it around they've played much more like the side that finished in the top four in the last I think three seasons yeah. in the Liga and they've been on a great winning run they put United out in the, the last round even though they rested a lot of players in that first leg because they had a, a relegation you know tie on the horizon against Valencia 
And they have so much depth. I mean, even though they changed loads of players there, they've got a really strong squad, a, a, you know, a squad that should possibly be at least fourth or fifth in La Liga this season. Um, so I really like them. I really like them as a team, even though Sousa got, you know, has be, got an injury and he's one of my sort of underrated players that I really like. Um, you, you know, you've got Lucas Ocampos, who was on loan. He was I sent on loan to Ajax last season and he's coming back, playing really well under the new coach. And Juve, I mean, you can say what you like about them, but when they had that 15-point deduction, they they didn't let it sell, you know, sort of get to them. And yes, it's been overturned now, but they, they kind of got back into the Champions League race, even with that point deduction, with the, the way they were playing. Yeah. And then basically when those point deduction was overturned, they kind of like lost a bit of focus and they've, they've had some poor results lately in Serie A, you know, lost to the Swallow away, they lost to Lazio and, and Napoli, you know, and, and Inter Milan, of course, teams around them. And that's put a sort of a bit of a, a bit more pressure on them in the, in the Champions League race, especially because we don't know if that 15 points deduction is going to stand or not. Yeah, they've got a five points yeah. lead now, but they've been really impressive. I, Allegri's turned it around, even if they doubts about him as a coach, whether he's attacking enough and, some of his formational changes, you know, a narrow four four two sometimes. This three five one one that he's playing a lot with, you know, Di Maria behind one striker. There's a few question marks about that, but you have to give them credit for what they've done this season. It's difficult on the betting front because, of course, they're at home in the first leg. They're massively favoured to to win the first leg. I mean, Sevilla four point seven on the road, which, as you say, for a team that's that's kind of made for this competition and that's playing so well. I mean, one of the more informed teams in Europe at the moment, you know, outside the real giant sides. Um, I think they have a decent chance of getting through in this tie. I mean, to qualify their 2.2, I mean, that looks very tempting to me for Sevilla. Um, I think that's kind of how I'll be heading on the betting front for this game. Well, how about you, Dave? What would your strategy be, you know, looking at what it is right now and having Juventus at the home advantage that they have going into this first leg? Yeah, I think Grant summed it up quite nicely. You know, you you did really well when they had this ban, uh, but dropped off. You know, ever since the 15 points were, were given back to them, just three wins in their last 10 matches yeah. and, and four losses. Uh, interestingly, eight out of their last 10 games had under 2.5 goals. So, you know, they they often quite tight. Uh, like Grant said, also Sevilla, it, it almost felt like, you know, when they came back against United in the first leg from 2-0 down to, to get the 2 all result, that sparked sort of some form also in the league because just one defeat in their last nine games, uh, six wins. Uh, interestingly, Sevilla actually have goals in their games. 20 out of their last 23 games had, had over 1.5 goals. Um, I do, similar to the Milan Derby, expect this to be quite tight. I mean, we know, <clears throat> maybe it's an old saying, but uh, Italian sides in, in European competitions, you know, they keep it quite tight at the back. Um, and the first legs traditionally, you know, are a bit more tight than than the second legs where, where you know teams have to have a go because you know you need what uh, you know what result you need. Uh, so for this one again, uh, it's very uncharacteristic for me to do this, but I selected under three point five goals uh, at at one point two five odds for the multi. All right, so that's a that, that's a nice one, and of course the fourth Italian team that's part of a European competition, uh, going into Thursday is that massive one, Roma, Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Roma lost over the weekend, but I think if you really look at it, uh, their focus must have been on Europa Grant. Yeah, look, they want to get in the top four in Syria, but they have a lot of injuries in their squad. So Mourinho's having a tough time trying to balance everything together. You know, this weekend, Tammy Abraham didn't play, played Bellotti. I mean, he was a doubt before the game with rib injury. Uh, it wasn't surprising that they lost Inter Milan with the players that they had missing. Um, you know, you know, Roma have some good players when, they, when their best 11 is available. But, you know, when they lose guys like Chris Smalling, believe it or not, an absolutely pivotal player, and they sent, you know, and it's... Um, center center back role in the back three. He's been injured, still a doubt for this game. You know, um, Paulo Dybala, he got some minutes this weekend, which is good because he's also been carrying an injury. So for this game, it's much different to some of the league matches. Dybala and Abraham will probably play in the front three with, you know, Pellegrini as the third sort of player supporting them. And they've, they obviously, they won the, uh, the conference league last year with Mourinho. He's got an enormous amount of pedigree in this competition. Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of neutrals would, would love it if you won another European trophy this year. Of course, it would, it would get them into the Champions League. 
Um, so they have two different routes, but it does look a bit kind of remote that they are doing it in Serie A right now. So I think all the eggs will soon go into this basket. Um, but yeah, it, it, before I even would willing, be willing to back Roma, I would, would want to see their lineup. Like, is Candy Bala play? Can he start? And how long can he, could he last? And is Smalling playing? I think he's going to miss out. So that makes, you know, I think that does make the tie maybe slightly more towards Leverkusen. They've been in good form for a long period of time. Yes, they lost to um, Cologne this weekend, but they hadn't lost a fixture going back, you know, a couple of months before that. I'm sure Dave's going to fill us in on a lot of their, you know, the more intricacies of the of the side, especially, they, you know, they've had some big results lately, beating RB Leipzig, even um, a, late, you know, a late goal to seal that one. And they've been doing well in this competition. They've got a very good young coach who's probably going to be headed for one of the big sides pretty soon. Wouldn't be surprising to see him in the next maybe three or four years get one of the top jobs like Real Madrid or, or something like that. So, yeah, it's it's an exciting time. I'm sure Dave's very excited. You know, you've got your Real Madrid guys playing in Europe this week. Um, so I'm a bit jealous. You guys have a lot riding on the end of the season where so I'm actually counting down the days, hoping it ends as soon as possible. Um, but I'm sure Dave will give a lot more insights on Leverkusen than, you know, than I can. Dave, look, last last away loss was back in February. So in terms of traveling, Leverkusen looks like a decent side, and I think they'll be up for it going into Thursday. Yeah, and I have to put a disclaimer, you know, before I, I start my analysis. You know, Xabi Alonso is already at a big side in Europe, Grant. <laughs> Come on! Uh, Let them know, one Dave. One of the top, top teams. <laughs> and, uh, it's i know i know what you mean i hear what you're saying uh it's it's a bit sad to see the sharks already circling around him you know after just one uh good season at leverkusen uh, i hope he can continue obviously i'm i'm excited for this one uh it's it feels like it's contrasting form you know going into this game roma just three wins in 11 uh, five losses and uh, Leverkusen were unbeaten in 14 games before Friday's loss to Cologne, you know, 10 wins. Um, um, there is goals in both game, um, for both teams. I mean, believe it or not, even even the Roma games where you, you, you would think uh, it often comes across like Mourinho, you know, is still uh, very, you know, parking the bus and, and all those things. But the 7 out of 10 Roma games had over the 1.5 goals. 13 out of 15 Leverkusen games had over 1.5 goals. There's an interesting factor here, obviously, uh, like Brandt said, a lot of the neutrals that are not Leverkusen fans like me uh, will want Mourinho in the final just because of the character he is. Um, he's. I had a look. He, I think he's reached 12 European semifinals and he went through to the final five times, including the last three. You know, he won... Europa with United. Uh, he won the Conference League with, with Roma and, and Europa League last season. Uh, but before that, I mean, Grant will know he was knocked out in three uh, semifinals with Chelsea and three semifinals with, with Real Madrid. I mean, both of you will actually know. Um, so it's a bit up and down for him. He will want to prove a point. Um, I think, again, uh, even though there have been goals in, in games of, of both teams of late, uh, Again, another t another tie that I think will be quite tight in the first leg, and I did the same selection as in the in the in the previous two under under three point five goals uh, at one point two five odds. Uh, probably with me saying all these unders that that often don't come through when I when I have them in my slips, all these games will probably now shoot the lights out with you know many many goals. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm trying this for the multi and see how it goes. Well, that's Europa. Oh, look, it's going to be an exciting week of uh, incredible Europe action that's going to be coming your way. Let us know where you'll be going in terms of betting, and then we'll return next week. I don't know how Dave and I are going to be after this week, but Monday is certainly going to be an interesting recording time, and of course, you'll be indulging in all those second leg action. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me yet again, um, ch chatting all things Champions League and of course Europa. We'll see you again next week. Thank you. Cheers, Jens. Thank you, guys.